to let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Let the church of the living God say amen. Amen. We certainly honor the spirit of the Lord today that is rich and ripe and real in our souls. And again, to the officers and members here at FBC and to our body of Christ viewing us virtually, we love you. And thank you once again for meeting us here. Pastor Simmons, we honor you. And we thank the Lord for your treasure, your time, and your talent. And to everyone established here today, let us celebrate this choir. Our music ministry has been faithful and fruitful during this time and season. So we honor you and we thank you. To the absent part of our ministerial team, we honor them in their respective places. And you, you, and you. For everyone is someone in the house of the Lord. This morning's scripture reference, Exodus chapter 17. I'm going to begin at verse 8, verses 8 through 16. Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. Then came Amalek and fought Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out and fight Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Ur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him and sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur sat upon his hands. And the one on the side and one on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name here of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. This is the reading of the Lord's word for the Lord's people. Thanks be unto God. You may have your seats. As we unpack this text this morning... We are presented with a name of God, Jehovah Nisi, which means God is our banner. As we unpack this moment, we must unpack the significance of a banner or a flag. I understand in past years and some recent times that there has been a lot of controversy over NFL players and other players kneeling during the national anthem, taking a knee. Banners, beloved, are raised to celebrate and to provide honor. We as the body of Christ understand what it means to take a knee. We take it to the Lord in prayer. We understand that banners hang from rafters of arenas honoring champions. There are labels and signets. They announce names and images where people can recognize them from a great distance. They show the location or the identity of businesses or events so we as people can navigate it. Banners are visible. The whole point of a banner is for the banner to be seen. Banners are for those who raise them. They are an act of celebration, remembrance, or an announcement. 
banners. We're talking about banners in the text. For God is our Jehovah Nisi. Behind me in the rear we see to my left and your right we have the Christian banner or flag. And to my right and your left we have the flag or the banner of the United States of America. We are clear this morning that Jehovah Nisi means the Lord is our banner. It reminds us in the Hebrew translation, it is also rendered as the Lord is my refuge. Also that Jehovah, our God, is my exhortation. We're talking about the banner of God being Jehovah Nisi. So here in the text, the chapter recounts that Israel had the advantage over their enemy as long as their leader Moses watching the banner from a vantage point held his staff aloof. If I can submit to some to enter others to tag the text, it is the vantage point. Someone say the vantage point. So the most symbolic meaning here of a staff, it is clear that it means the social status and the authority of the individual with the staff. It represents masculine power, authority, and dignity. The Bible says here that the battle was for survival. We're talking about Exodus where people were leaving one place of bondage and moving to a place of freedom the place where God declared that they would have milk and honey overflowing with victory. So here, they were in the battle for survival, in the battle for hope, and in the battle for future. Aren't we glad this morning that the battle is already fixed and the fight has already been won? Thanks be unto God that gives us the victory and causes us the triumph. Here in the text, we are reminded at the end that they travailed. However, they had to go through some things. But we are excited to note here as we unpack this moment that the nation of Israel had something that other nations did not have. They had a pillar of fire, a cloud of smoke that represented the presence of God. Israel, beloved, did not have to fight the battle alone. No matter what you're going through, I want to remind you this morning that it doesn't matter how inexperienced you are or overmatched that you may be. It does not matter if you are the underdog that God is our banner, that he is our Jehovah Nisi. It shows us that God is with us in every battle. It shows us that God is coming into our situations and he is ensuring our win. Someone declare the vantage point. This leads me to unpack the term vantage point. It means a position or a standpoint for which something is viewed or considered, it is a point of view. It is a position or a place that allows one wide or favorable overview of a situation or a scene. So here in the text, I want to provide a picture, once again, of this scene, the children of Israel. They were journeying from the wilderness and moving into the promise at the command of God. However, they found themselves in a compromising and challenging situation. They had been beloved thirsty and hungry and the enemy was ready to ambush them. Here, those in the front of the group, they understood that they were tired and quenching and those that were in the rear were very vulnerable. The Amalekites, they were ready to take down the people of God. Isn't it 
it interesting how the enemy will try to attack us at our very lowest point? The Amalekites wanted to take the Israeli people out right before they moved into their promise. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how the enemy does the same to us? He comes after us when we least expect it. He comes to try to knock us, not out, but down. He tries to knock us off our stride. But how many know that if God be for us, <laughs> he's more than anyone against us. Someone declare the vantage point. We're clear this morning. A few of us in the first few quarters of 2022, we grew weary and worn out, but we had the vantage point. I believe that we declared, I will lift up my eyes to the hills for which cometh my help, for my help comes from the Lord. What am I saying here that God will always be in the fight with his people? When the enemy comes in like a flood, God said, I will lift up a standard against him. There is always a shift for God's people. Instead of the enemy striking you, God will strike him. This leads me to my first point. It is posture. I've come to break the mindset of defeat. That the enemy has to bow down for you because that's his posture. We are reminded, beloved, that normally when we discuss this word posture, that we are referring to the position in which someone holds their body when they're sitting or they're standing. We've all been in situations where our elders told us, fix your posture, to stand up straight, to lift your head up and remind yourself of who you are, that you are the head and not the tail, that you are above only and not beneath. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, fix your posture. So here we are reminded in the context in which I'm referring, it is a conscious mental or outward behavioral attitude. I believe this morning, beloved, that we at times have been so bogged down that we did not know how we were going to raise up. But I've come to let you know that God is a deliverer. And during this time, I want to declare to you that not only are you coming out, you are going up. Too many times, beloved, we've come into the house of the Lord where we are bound by what's happening in our society, that we are bound by what's happening at our job. We are bound by what's happening in our homes. We are bound by what's happening in our school systems. We are bound by happenings in our government. If we're honest, some are even bound by happenings in their past. What happened, we did not expect to happen. But the objective that God is trying to share with us in this moment is to maintain your correct posture. Amen. Good posture always involves the body trying to stand and walk properly. Trying to remind itself that it should stand in the least strenuous position, supported by muscles and ligaments during the movement or weight-bearing activities. God is reminding us that our posture is always a power. Hmm. Our posture is always a promise. And our posture is always connected to a palace. 
We are reminded in this moment as I submit to you my second point, it is position. Someone say position. The enemy knows if we can just give our entire selves to God and tap in to who we really are and whose we are, what God can do and will do, and what he's done for others, he'll do for you. We can take back what the enemy stole from us. We are reminded in this moment that this is the reason why God says that we are not supposed to fight the battle in the first place. The battle does not belong to you. We wonder why, beloved, we walk around battered and bruised. It's because we are not supposed to fight. The battle has been won. The battle is won through Jesus Christ our Lord. What we're supposed to do is surrender all to Jesus and let him do the fighting for us. But what happens, if we're honest, we come into the house of the Lord and we forget who we are and the power that we possess. But I've come to let you know that greater is he that's within you than he that's within this world. I want to submit to you my third point. It is performance. Someone say performance. God wants to shift us in this season and bring us out with great substance. The battle, again, is not yours. God is saying, I'm ready to fight for you. Just tag me in. <laughs> the first thing we need to do is lift our hands and acknowledge that we need God in every situation. We are reminded in the text that this element we see here with Moses and Aaron and Ur is very important to the body of Christ. The key here, my brothers and sisters, is that we as brothers and sisters in the army of the Lord, we get weak in our battles. Every time Moses, catch this, found himself weak in the midst of the battle, the people began to lose. But every time he had the support of his brothers, Israel began to win the battle. What am I saying? We need each other to win. Because God is reminding us that we are greater together. We are reminded in the text that as long as we lift our hands to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, we raise our hands in worship, but also we raise our hands in the duality of warfare. God is going to fight this battle for you, and you are going to win. See, the devil, he wants to make you tired. He wants to tell you that you cannot make it. He wants to bog you down with stress. He wants to tell you it's not worth it. But as long as you keep your hands lifted in worship, we are reminded that God will answer our prayers. Beloved, my sisters and my brothers, I want to help you in this fourth quarter win. That as long as we stay connected as a body of believers, as long as we touch and agree, the Bible says Whatever we touch and agree here in heaven, it must be given to us here in earth. So I want to let you know this morning that we must trust God even when we can't trace him. 
by lifting up your hands and worshiping Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. We deliver and support the saints around us. As we unpack the word lift, it means to raise, to hoist, to elevate, to take up, to scoop, or to level up. It means to move from one place to another. So we are reminded in this moment that as we look to our Christian flag, I'm going to use Deacon Howard to show us an example. As the enemy tried to attack our brothers and sisters in Israel, they had a focal point. It was the flag of faith. It was the flag of God. Moses was a wise man. He took the rod, the banner of faith, understanding that the presence of God was with him. The opposing armies, you can wave the flag, deacon, would often, often fly a flagpole in front of their front lines to rally the troops. But when the flag moved, the troops had to move. And when the flag fluttered in the wind, the soldiers, because they understood Jehovah Nisi, their banner, they took courage. Who is God encouraging this morning, reminding you that the flag is still fanning? God is reminding us that flags give us hope. It also brings the armies together in a sense of unity. Let's be clear. The flag in and of itself does not have power. But catch this, Dr. Reed. It signifies that the soldiers who are fighting in the army of the Lord, <laughs> behind them have power, resources, and authority at their disposal. <laughs> so believers, we gather together under the banner of God. That's our Christian banner. We are saying to the enemy that we have help in the time of trouble. We are telling the enemy that we have God's power and his resources available to us. I've come to let you know that here in the text, it is reminding us that when Moses and Aaron and Ur, they were in battle, but they understood that the battle was above them. That the battle, check the text, was at the top of the hill. Some things, my brothers and sisters, cannot be fixed until we go higher. Some things are out of our reach because we have not gone higher. God is telling us that our steps are ordered by the Lord. But as we take a step, God is holding an invisible ladder that's placing us in the position of prominence, that's placing us in the position of authority. When he is quiet, he will not let us fall. God is the one who's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless. I've come to let you know that God is ready to place us in an elevated position. That God is telling us that the battle does not belong to us. That the fight is already fixed. And the battle is already won. But we are reminded in this moment that the enemy will attack us in our weakness. That the enemy will attack us in the area of his word. But thank God that the word is our defense in and of itself. The enemy will try to attack us in worship, but as we lift our hands, we give God praise. The 
enemy will try to attack us in our yes. The place of prominence and the place of purpose. I understand that the price of our yes is costly. But I've come to let you know in every place of pain, God will give us pleasure to follow. Is there anyone that's ready to go higher? As we've talked about that God is ready to move us forward and upward. That I love to use the example of airline baggage. That the plane is ready to take off. And once we are ready to go through, what happens when we have to go through our baggage claim? We have to go through the time when they check our bodies, our checkpoints. What happens if there's something on you that cannot go? What happens? You have to throw it away. What is God telling us to throw away today? There's some things and there are some people that just cannot go with you to the next level. But with no pain, there is no gain. Someone declared today the vantage point that we have in Jesus. And I want to encourage you today that as you come to lift up the name of Jesus, where the righteous run in and are safe, we can lift our hands and give God praise this morning as we support each other in our burdens. Aren't you glad that you are not in this by yourselves? I need you to stand all over this building. I don't know who's come in weakness, but I believe that you're going to leave in strength. Come on and clap your hands, all ye people, and shout with the voice of triumph. I come to let you know that we live in a community, and you cannot live in this community by yourself. I understand that we are still in COVID, but I need you to stretch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I know your burdens are heavy, but I need you to clap and give God praise. I understand that you may be weary, but I need you to lift your hands in worship. Someone is coming out with their hands up. They're coming out to give God praise. As I close and take my seat, I'm coming to let you know that you're coming out with victory, that you're coming out with the win. I need you to clap your hands and bless the name of Jesus that the fight is already fixed. And Moses built an altar and said, the Lord is my banner. See, I've come to let you know that the battle is already won. Why? Because they fought under the banner of Jesus Christ. Someone needs to lift their hands and open up their mouths and give God a praise. But when the praises go up, the blessings must come down. See, I've come to let you know that God is our banner and we need to lift him up. I need everyone this morning to celebrate your victory. Don't celebrate for yourself, but celebrate for your neighbor. See, when you're by yourself, God said that you have a brother or a sister that you can connect with and they can lift up your hands and you can win this battle. God told me to let you know that SBC is on the move, but he told me to let you know that we have to lift each other up. We cannot do this by ourselves. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you will win in this. I don't know what you came for, and I don't know what you have need for, but God told me to let you know that all you have to do is link up to go up. Do me a favor and say, neighbor, will you link up with me? Now, I don't know about you. I wasn't a dancer when I was in the world. 
But I believe there's some people that remember when they used to go out to the juke joint or to the club or to the bar that you had to link up with another dancer. I need everyone that can and will to link up with a sister or a brother and ask them, can I have this dance? God told me to let you know that when you link up, that you're going up. No matter what the enemy said, the battle doesn't belong to you. That I said that I said I said. Why? Because I am that I am. So God is telling us that he's waving the banner. He's waving the banner because he's Jehovah. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's the banner. And he's fighting for us. We're just connecting. We're just connecting. We're just connecting. We're just connecting. That's all. We're reminding ourselves of the banner. That we have the flag. That the flag is still in the center. That is still in the center. That just like as the Israelites, as they were going through battle, they had the banner. And they reminded that they had the presence of the Lord. They reminded the enemy that as we lift our hands, we're in warfare and worship. That as we connect with our brother, the presence of God, even if you cannot see it, it is with us. That's why we check the ancient text. We're talking about centuries ago they waved the flag to remind the enemy that greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world so we're going to take about 60 seconds before we close everybody that can and will now you had a dance for your neighbor now I need you to make this personal. Whew. Someone's been in a battle for too long. But God said you have the vantage point. That you have the posture. Everyone stand and we're going to correct our posture. We have a number of educators here. Dr. Gillia, Dr. Reed, reminding us that we have to keep our posture. Whew. And then we have to remember our placement, that we are the head, that we're on top of this. We have to have the eagle's perspective where we see from the vantage point. 